I hope I recorded all of that. Happy Halloween! Uh, I got my relatively Halloween-y getup going on. Uh, I also bought a microphone. Uh, so we'll see if that makes a difference or not, because I don't know yet. I think it should. Um, but I'm back, uh, and let me say, I love tornadoes. I love tornadoes, I love natural disasters, I love weather phenomena, I love weird weather phenomena, I love regular weather phenomena, I love it, I love all of it. I don't love the catastrophic damage that natural disasters do bring, I don't love it. I don't love tornadoes destroying communities, I don't love property damage, I don't love people loss, that sucks, but, but, from a just standard point of view of like a science nerd, I think weather is fantastic. And I love even more when you see it in unusual places. So today I picked a handful of unusual tornadoes. Uh, and when I say unusual tornadoes, I mean tornadoes in places that typically wouldn't see them. So it comes as a little bit of a surprise for those that ended up getting them. And while I love tornadoes, I do not love what comes of tornadoes sometimes. You know, I would much prefer a tornado hit the thousands upon thousands of acres of the United States that have literally nothing on them, just open dirt road. And while unfortunately not all these today follow that suit, um, no casualties as far as I'm aware of for any of these. So uh, keeping, it, keeping it light, keeping it, just talking about the weather. I love the weather. We're just talking about the weather today. So uh, kick back, relax, uh, and let's, let's just dive right into it. Let's dive right into it. We'll start small with Alaska. Now you might have seen this picture in 2024 or you might not have, I don't know what you get up to, but pictured is a lovely EF0 spotted by Wolverine Peak in Rusty Point, Alaska. This is Alaska's sixth tornado in its recorded history, not including two water spouts spotted off the coast. But how fortunate that we are to have this itty bitty tornado in a spot where we could record it, and the video footage didn't end up looking like it was shot on a DSi. Okay, so this is editor Sophia here. Uh, turns out I completely imagined this tornado footage. It doesn't exist. I just completely imagined it. Um, so to fill that space, uh, my lovely friend James created this fantastic animation. Uh, you should follow his socials. But uh, thank you again to James for fixing this because I am crazy. Now, I know I'm kind of testing it by calling this one a tornado as it was more of a land spout. A land spout differs from a tornado as rather than it being sparked by a supercell or isolated storm, its creation comes more from the updrafts of passing thunderstorms. Regardless, it got an EF rating and it's officially documented as a tornado, so I'm calling this a tornado. Hey, I'm walking here! In Brooklyn, New York, circa August 2007. The largest tornado to strike the city in New York in recorded history, starting from Staten Island, across the Narrows, and into Brooklyn, with the worst damage being reported in Sunset Park and Bay Ridge. Now I don't know where any of this is, but I'm sure you New Yorkers know all about it. Most of the damage on Staten Island was to trees, but continuing down 68th Street, it damaged the roofs of 11 homes into Leaf Erickson Park Square, where severe damage to trees occurred and where winds blew out a 15-foot tall stained glass window valued at $300,000 at the nearby 4th Avenue Presbyterian Church. It then crossed the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, ripping the roofs off of even more homes and uprooted 30 trees along Ocean Parkway, before finally uplifting for the final time. The National Weather Service marked this twister as an EF2, ultimately causing tens of millions of dollars in damage. The max wind speed recorded was around 111 to 135 miles per hour, and fortunately, no serious injuries or deaths were reported. Any small injuries were generally from flying debris, but it was nothing to write home about. Despite its lack of brutality, it certainly caused quite the ruckus for city dwellers, as the storm system also brought flooding, disrupting all methods of transportation for those on the ground. The thing is, it was technically cataloged as two tornadoes, and after initially touching down in Staten Island, 
It uplifted closer to the narrows, then redeveloped, recycling and gaining strength before touching back down in Brooklyn, with the first one being ranked in EF1 and the second one being ranked in EF2. But there seems to be a decent amount of confusion along the lines of how continuous the paths were for these tornadoes, and a decent amount of sources just kind of log it as one event. So we're just going to do that here. And if you're worried about technicalities, forget about it. <laughs> but while we're close to it geographically, let's talk about Cape Cod, Massachusetts, a popular tourist destination for those who love beaches, lobsters, and tornadoes. Massachusetts only gets on average one tornado per year, but for whatever reason, Cape Cod has been hit by a surprising number of tornadoes in recent history. 2019 saw an outbreak of at least two tornadoes. The National Weather Service issued tornado warnings with lead times of 16 and 31 minutes, and fortunately, the tourist pack region saw no fatalities or injuries from said tornadoes. However, it was certainly a pain in the rear for both residents and tourists afterwards, with over 50,000 customers losing power for multiple days, traffic being blocked off due to fallen trees, and the roof of a motel was peeled off like the lid to a can of sardines. Come inside! Come inside, girl! I mean, talk about spoiling a vacation. The first tornado touched down near Calmus Beach in Barnstable at 11.57 a.m., and the second tornado struck Harwick at 12.10 p.m., both with an EF1 rating measuring up to 110 miles per hour. While there was a third radar-confirmed tornado to strike the area around noontime, it was only grounded for less than a minute before uplifting, causing mild damage in comparison to the other two tornadoes. The storm also produced various water spouts, and with one of which becoming the EF-1 that made landfall on Calmus Beach, but ultimately dissipated towards south of Yarmouth. With warming ocean temperatures and continued atmospheric changes coming about, it's very possible Cape Cod can see more tornadoes in its future. At the bare minimum, it will definitely be seeing more severe thunderstorms. So as much as the area might appeal for vacation goers, Maybe consider a different spot for your summer getaways. But let's shift gears to about 3,000 miles away from Cape Cod to Reno, Nevada. No, not El Reno, just Reno. Calm down, nerds. Weather geeks, dweebs. Yeah. I assume if anybody's watching this, they're a mm -hmm. weather nerd. Nevada, a dry desert state one that receives barely any tornadoes, or even much rain for that matter. But in 2015, an EF-1 touched down through Hawthorne, causing extensive damage to various homes and businesses in the area. Once again, no injuries or deaths were reported, but golf ball-sized hail poured down in Mineral County. With wind speeds around 86 to 109 miles per hour, the damage path was almost two miles long, much more treacherous than your average desert dust devil, but ultimately weakening to an EF-0 and dissipating west of I-95. Tornado. My word. Tornado in Hawthorne, Nevada. While it did knock power out for residents, it was temporary, with power being restored not too long afterwards. A large tree was reported to have collapsed onto a mobile home, along with damage to a couple other cars. The environment was relatively favorable for tornadic activity, but it definitely wasn't expected. Only severe thunderstorms were on the docket for the day. And while definitely not the most destructive tornado to ever hit the state, it was definitely a spooky afternoon for residents not expecting much outside of your standard passing thunderstorm. You haven't forgotten where this state is, right? I know she's a little small, but in 2020, Delaware saw its longest track tornado in recorded history, traveling about 35 miles. 
This tornado actually spawned in tandem with a few others in surrounding areas, with one in Worcester Township, Pennsylvania, and the other in Marmora, New Jersey. These were all a result of Hurricane Isaias, which managed to spin up at least 39 tornadoes across the mid-Atlantic states. Three tornadoes struck Delaware on the same day, August 4th, 2020. However, the one we're focusing on is the rare EF2 that hit from Dover to Middletown. With max wind speeds of 115 miles per hour and a max width of 500 yards, the tornado tore off pieces of a middle school roof, a warehouse had parts of its metal walls removed, and tractor trailers were flipped completely over. Numerous trees were damaged or uprooted while the tornado was on the ground in Kent County. The long track tornado then entered Newcastle County, where it snapped and uprooted numerous trees, destroyed a garage at a residence, blew out several other residences, garage doors, down the walls of homes, and produced extensive damage to many residences' roofs. About a dozen of these homes sustained enough damage to be declared uninhabitable at the end of it. While the tornado alone caused significant damage, the rains that followed the storm also produced flash flooding at many locations in northern Delaware, where streams came out of their banks, resulting in several road closures and water rescues. While the state normally sees an average of one tornado a year, if any, with changing weather patterns, it's looking more likely that the small state will be receiving more tornadoes, along with more severe weather in general. Delaware sits right between the Atlantic Ocean and continental air masses, so extra humidity and warm water can supercharge storms that already pass through. In other words, a juicier atmosphere gives more potential for rotating storms that can produce tornadoes. Some research suggests that the tornado and severe storm activity is shifting eastwards from plains to the Midwest and Southeast. Delaware, sitting on the edge of that corridor, could end up in the path of more favorable storm setups. I tried to pick tornadoes that were, you know, not necessarily more well-known, more fly under the radar type of ordeal. You know, I, I don't feel like being the 50th guy to cover Gerald or Joplin or more. Uh, even though they're great, they're fantastic tornadoes, great coverage. I like, you know, I love it. But uh, there's other ones. There's other ones out there. So I tried to cover some of them. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, I know it wasn't a ton, but uh, you know, I want to keep it light, keep it cheeky. I know, you know, the last one was a little more intense. I want to calm it down a little bit. Uh, if you were here for any of these tornadoes, feel free to leave a comment or let me know, you know, what was it like being there? Uh, unfortunately, I mean, I, I technically have been in tornadoes, but uh, I have very little to no recollection of any of these events. So if you have recollection of any of these events, uh, feel free to leave a comment, like, subscribe, you know, all that jazz. Uh, tune into the stream on the 28th, Hello Stream. I'm assuming this video is coming out before then. I'm hoping this video is coming out before then. Uh, and happy Halloween uh, for everyone else that also enjoys that holiday because I love Halloween. I'm also a big fan of Halloween uh, in case you, in case you haven't pick up, picked up on that.